Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast is a Christ-centered podcast established in 2019 and hosted weekly by Pastor Chris Busher. Addressing a host of topics such as the Great Commission, Christian discipleship, and often featuring interviews with special guests who are experts in their field. The views and events expressed on this podcast and all related materials belong solely to their author and not necessarily to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. While all attempts are made to present accurate information, some information may become outdated over time. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast makes every attempt to timely update any and all such information. Without further delay, here's another powerful episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Hello and welcome back to yet another podcast from Faith and Family Fellowship. I am your co-host, Dallas Montague. I love to be here recording interviews, recording testimonies of people, getting to know people all over the world. Today we have a special guest, Stefan Dries from the UK. And Stefan has a very interesting testimony, a very interesting story. He went through YWAM as a young man. And when he was in Youth with a Mission, he went to India. And he began to share these little stories with these children in the villages and the streets through a translator about where do the balloons go when they fly away. What he explained was that there's this utopia above the clouds, this other kingdom that the balloons live. He began to tell this story and develop the story over the years. Today, it's developing into a children's animated series, an animated TV show. And it's very interesting to hear the creation of it, to hear the testimonies behind it and the way that it's came to what it is today. Guys, be encouraged. We're going to get into the podcast right now. I'm going to say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, thank you for this podcast. I just invite you in, Holy Spirit. I pray that the words that we share today with our listeners will inspire them. I pray that they leave different. I pray that they're so encouraged that they want to surrender their lives to you again, that people can have a heart to give to this project that Stefan is creating here, that they can get on board. And if you move in these people's hearts, that they will be a part of it as well. Lord, we love you so much. You get all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You're listening to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. We'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsors. Gift. Growing intentional families together believes adoption influences a family throughout their lives. They change the cultural myth which asserts adoption is a happily ever after event which permanently and painlessly solves the problems for children, adoptive parents, and birth parents. At GIFT, they view adoption through Christ's perspective. Contact them at giftfamilyservices.com. When you know how to attract the right prospects, connect with those prospects to become great clients, create your world-class program, and serve your clients at that scale, you will have all the tools necessary to rapidly grow your coaching business to be the coaching business you dream of and deserve. All our material are designed to help you with those four elements using cutting edge strategies, tools, and scientifically backed heart-driven approach to reach success and significance. Here at Success and Significance Coach, we work hard so you don't have to. Contact us at juancarlos.live. How are you today, Stefan? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me with you. Yes, it's great to have you today. Where are you coming out of today? Where Where are you located? I'm, I'm living now 17 years in Manchester, UK, in Europe. And um, originally, I come from Germany. From Germany. Wow. Well, it's great to have you on the podcast today. You have some interesting things that you're bringing to the show today. You have something called Balloon Nights. Is that how you pronounce that yes. correctly? Okay. This is a children's animated film that you're creating. Yes. Okay, before we get into that, I would just like you to share some of your story with us. Yes, I would. I would love to. The story is this, that I converted to Christianity when I was around 22 years old as a guy who was not interested in Christianity or church or God or Jesus, whatever you call it. I was a football hooligan, a leader of a gang called Red Devils, which I was leading with my with a friend of mine together. And um, like it is in this background, you know, you drink, you fight, you take drugs, everything. And um, even my mom tried to bring me up with the Catholic faith. I turned away from it when I was in my teenage because I don't, I did not experience Scott there. So, but I came to a point when I was around 22 where I wanted to kill myself because everything went wrong. And um, I had a lot of court hearings and I knew I would go to jail and I was really afraid. 
So I mean, this night I had the experience where God touched my life and changed it completely. It was an experience where there was no person involved. I only shouted to God as a last possibility, a last try, if he is real. Mm -hmm. And I experienced something in this in this vineyard where I tried to kill myself. What later I found in the Bible, like on the day of Pentecost, when a power came, the Holy Spirit, they say, and it touched me, it changed me in this night, and I knew God is real. Mm -hmm. And so once you found out that God was real and he is who he says he is and maybe what you've been taught growing up, uh, how did that change your life moving forward when you, when you met him that night? I mean, the greatest change and the greatest miracle for me was because, like I said, God was for me the same like church. And church, in my opinion, was something what is for older people and not for the cool young teenagers, you know, and, and guys. But in this night, when um, I was really crying out, God, if you're real, um, if you're real, do something now. I have no idea what to do. And I said it in my way. You know, it was not a, a nice prayer or whatever. It was a cry of desperation. And when this presence of God touched me, it was so intense. It was so, so special, so different. I mean, uh, it was like there is no time in it. And it was like some different dimension touched me, but I felt this love and this peace. And I had a peace in my mind I never had before. And then a voice said to my heart, you shall live. And that was something what I always were longing for, you know, uh, to be accepted, to re be respected like many young people. And so it was so intense that when I discovered this was Jesus, that I decided to dedicate my whole life to him. That's powerful. I wanted to tell others about it, you know, what mm -hmm. I experienced, because I thought there are many out there like me who search in the wrong things. Exactly. We try to fill ourselves. I just did a podcast a few days ago about a woman who tried to fill herself with everything that the world had to offer. And then she came to a point where she realized that Jesus was the answer, you know? So it sounds the running theme in the last few podcasts that I've had. It's like, and so today you're a, motiv a motivational speaker, a leadership coach, an author, a producer, and now you're creating this children's film, Blue Nights. So what led you into that moment, your life changing then and then to where you are today? Yeah, I think I'm in a phase in my life like many people where where God, you know, life is sometimes like we do a lot of things as we're young and we grow up and we think that's it now. But then as we get older, we realize all the stages of life, what we did before prepared us for what is coming now. So as I have been doing many things, I was in mission in India. I was a full-time pastor in, in a church in Germany. I was in traveling ministry. I was helping people, coaching people. My heart was always in the younger generation, in the children. And so a few years ago, I was praying and I said to God, God, you know, I believe that we Christians should be out there in society and we should bring ideas from heaven, which, which will touch the hearts of the people. So I asked God what I should do. And I, I felt like in my heart that God wants me to do a movie. And this was surprise, very surprising for me because I have never done something like this, specifically not in the animation area. So I started to research. I thought about, okay, what could I do? And I was for a long time carrying a story in my heart, a children's story. So and I stepped out in faith and um, experienced incredible things. You know, it was a learning curve. It's now a few years, but also some incredible things. Doors got opened, finances he released. And so that's actually in the moment my main focus, even I still invest in people and do seminars, but um, to produce media which will really help our children to grow up is a different perspective that's what i'm focusing in the moment so you named that the film that you're working on right now balloon nights yeah the balloon nights are the people these balloon people who live there but okay. um actually the whole the working title is above the clouds so the whole idea actually for the story <laughs> came more than 20 years back i always tell the people i was longer pregnant than an elephant you know mm -hmm. um and the idea actually came when i worked with street children in uh, india in mumbai in bombay uh, at this time bombay today they call it mumbai and so one day I was praying before I went to bed and I said, God, I would love to tell them a story which we don't have here on earth. Give me an idea. So the next morning I woke up and in a kind of state of half sleep, 
I had this picture in my mind of a balloon flying through the room, and suddenly these thoughts came to me, the kingdom of colors and light above the clouds, that's where the balloons go. And so I started to go out to the street kids with a translator and told them this story about this wonderful kingdom and this other dark kingdom of dark clouds. And so over and over and over the years, I told it in different places and people came to me. The kids were really liking it. And so a few years ago, when God said, make me a movie, I thought, OK, what do I have? You know, it's a little bit this principle of the fish and the bread. Um, what do I have? And so I had this story and I started to develop it. And the Bellunites, they live in euphoria, which is the kingdom of colors of light. So it's more like we all experience that a child loses a balloon and watches the balloon flying away into the clouds. So but what is happening with his balloons when he's, when his balloon when he's gone? The idea was there's a whole kingdom above the clouds, and I used a lot of symbolic from the scripture, where there are trees who, you know, are clapping in the hands, there are mountains um, who sing, who shout, and, and different stuff, and the, and the valley of the water balloons. And the story developed more and more, and I was surprised when I stepped out and I spoke with different TV producers, with different people in this entertainment world, that they all said, man, you really have something there. I really like what you're saying. The story started in India, yeah. how you were just sharing the story to children through a translator. And yeah. I could imagine just the joy of those kids' faces. I spent some time in Asia as well, in Thailand and Cambodia. And when you work through a translator, you know, things are a little bit different. And so I could just see you there in my mind, really just sitting there telling the story to these children and then loving it. And now it developing into a movie. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is with this story, you know, um, we are living in, some people say, dark times, challenging times. But as Christians, I think we, we are called to bring hope and to bring color and light into the life of the people. And so the Balloonites actually, they're in the moment when they go through the clouds, the normal balloon, and you can see some little clip on our website, which I guess we will later also tell the listeners about where, where, what the website is, they're changing balloon children. And so, so the desire of these balloon children is to be one day a watcher in our world, which is what we believe in in, in, Christ, in Christianity, like angels. So that's why you see everywhere balloons on children parties, on hospital beds, on certain celebration. They are here to protect the children. Up above the clouds, there is a whole different kingdom. So in India at this time, I wanted to give the kids some hope, you know, that whatever they experience here, there's a kingdom which will be different. And there's someone watching over them. And, and so when I created this story and we move forward to saying, OK, we want to produce a, a, a children animation series with different episodes, I also decided, OK, the story was once given for these kids in India. And whatever happens with this movie, it shall not be only a tool of communicating great values to our kids, but also the profit who comes in shall be released and shall be used to help kids out of the sex trade because I had few years where I was involved in this and we helped a number of kids to get saved from it. And so your vision for this is more of a film or more of a series? We want to do a series because the idea with with the um, with this whole land, what, what we created has so much potential. Also the potential about it's some things up, some episodes playing above the clouds and some episodes playing in our world. So this connection, like we Christian know, which is between the spiritual and the natural world. So, um, yeah, we said we want to have different episodes. This is really cool. This is really interesting. I've never had a podcast on something like this before. So it's very different for me and it's really, really cool. So just tell me the story and the journey behind the creation. So I looked at your website a little bit. It was telling about the animation process and some of those things, but can you just share some of that with our listeners? Yeah, I want to encourage um, your listeners because I'm not coming from this background. I had no idea about animation when I stepped into this area. And the way I grew up, I was more um, a freight person, but God did a lot over the years. And I saw, OK, if, if we step out in faith and um, also use our <laughs> logical mind, um, that God can do the rest. So as I researched what is it all about animation, I, I, I tell you, I was happy I didn't know what it costs <laughs> because I don't know if I would have done it, if I would have known what it costs. Um, so God was really good to me, not uh, using me not to have any idea. But in the beginning, it really looked like, wow, doors opening up everywhere. I remember 
when I had a contact to Jeffrey Scott, which is a scriptwriter, well known. He worked with Warner Brothers, with Disney, um, with Marvel. He wrote scripts. And so really naive, I asked him, said, so how much would cost a script of 20 minutes, you know, for the first episode? And he said, it will make you a very good price, $17,000. And, oh and, and I first thought he's choking <laughs> because I said, what? I mean, the most I thought would be maybe around 5000 And this would have been for me already a lot. Just so thought, you are saying for a script of 20 pages, you want $17,000? So I got him down to 15,000. I had no money. Um, and I said, okay, let's do it. And um, after I put the phone down, I thought, oh my gosh, Lord, I really, really need your help. I have no money. This guy's writing this script. If nothing is happening, I'm really done. And a few wow. hours later, I got a call from a lady in Germany and she somehow heard from someone that I'm playing with the thought of creating a, a children animation series. And she said, hey, listen, I got money back from my life insurance. I want to give you... $25,000 for this children project. And I said, oh, it really looks like God wants this. And so I started and, and Jeffrey Scott wrote the first episode. And um, then I had interesting people on board who are really well known in the animation area. And then God said to me, I don't want to do it through the pro professionals. I want to do it through you because if I do it through you, I will get all the honor. If I do it through the professionals, they will get all the honor. People would say it's because so-and-so was on board. That's why this thing worked out. But if I do it through you, you know, they would say this guy has no idea how in all the world did this work. So and so, and I said this, you know, I, I had different connections then. I stopped these connections with these professionals who are really door openers in the entertainment world. And it really looked so much like this is from God. But he said very clear no. And then I lost some money on the way because people tried to cheat me the normal way. But finally, I found the right people in Seattle with whom I work together now, um, who understand the vision behind it, who have a heart for the story, um, and who really also ready to pay the price, you know, because sometimes we don't have the full money, what we need. And, um, you know, these guys have already cut the, 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 the salary for this movie, but then, you know, got provided again. It's really, it's, it's incredible, but it's also sometimes scary. It's like God funds his plans, right? Like he provides everything that we need to go. Yes. I realize if we really check our motivation, and we are not in it for our own fame and our building our own empire and, and, and creed for money. And if we listen to him and also ready always to draw back and sit again in front of the strategy and say, did I do something wrong and, and learn on the way, then, then he really, on the end of the day, he is so on time, you know. I mean, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he knows. It sounds like a, a process for sure. And what's been the biggest thing that you've learned probably over the process of this journey? I think the biggest thing is not to be afraid to follow your passion because um, there was a shift in my life where I was quite frustrated with, um, I did things and the things were well and, and, and people were blessed and everything was fine. But I knew there is, there is something bigger which, which, which God has for us and that my vision and the things I did, I mean, I could do them, you know, because over the years you get experience. And when this passion came and it's, it's, it's the creativity God has given into us. It's this passion of, because what we said is with this production in animation, you can either do cheap animation, which looks like this, or you can really hit for the top, you know, to say, okay, we want to produce like this name because we want to honor God's name. We want to show that there is a big God and we want to do it really well for him. And um, this, this was kind of scary, but the passion about the project, um, to see it, I mean, the best moment was when I saw the first time these characters moving and alive in a way like, you know, what was long, many years in your heart or in pictures. But it's follow your passion, whatever age you have. I'm 52 now. You know, and many people would say, hey, settle in the ministry, um, keep on doing your things and stuff like this. But I felt really, no, I have not touched really what I'm made for. And so I want to encourage your listener, it doesn't matter the age, it doesn't matter if you have any idea what you're doing, be ready to learn. Don't jump in totally naive and lie to yourself and you don't really have faith, but step out and don't wait till everything is in place, but research and God will lead and guide you in it. You know, as, as you move and, and be ready to be moved from God, he will go in it, but follow your passion. I like what you said. You said, 
don't wait to jump out until you have everything that you need. Because I mean, we can just all be honest with ourselves. If we waited until we had everything we needed, we'd never go. Yeah. You know, because we'd never have everything we needed. And like I said, I think it's a process. God probably has taught you so much during the process and you're not even finished yet. You know, he, he wants to teach us. He wants to get to know us more. And Yeah. And until today, I mean, you know, all the money what we got in, which mainly were, were, were given from Christians in Germany uh, or in Austria. And it's very interesting. It's people who got suddenly got put it on their head. One very incredible story is I was on a conference in France. And um, we again needed around $11,000 for the next step. And I have no idea where it's coming from. Um, I, I know in America it's different, but in Europe, we ministers, we don't have millions, you know, <laughs> the thing like. Um, so I was praying in the morning and I felt like I should share only a little bit about the story on this conference in France. And it was not a big conference. It was, was maybe 100 people. So I went out and I said to the people, listen, I want to share with you something, an idea, which I think is from God, um, which we tried to pursue. And so I told about the stories. And then a man came afterwards to me, uh, uh, a share broker, and he said, listen, I woke this morning up and this thought came in my mind. A story for children with balloons would be fantastic. And then you came and spoke in the meeting about it. <laughs> How much money do you need for the next step? And I said, so and so much. And a few days later, you sent me the money. So wow. it's, it's really... That's putting people in place. Yeah, wow. exactly. You know, I mean, we had sometimes I, in January, it came on the last day of the, mo of the month in the last few hours, what we needed to complete the month, you know, so he's, he's faithful, he's faithful. And even if it sometimes looked like you're too late, I thought many times, am I too late? But looking back, when I got the stories more than 20 years ago, we didn't have the technical abilities we have today. And the networking internationally, even now in this whole coronavirus crisis, the guys are working from at home all the time with a computer network, you know, where we are linked with one another. So it's not a problem for us. And how many episodes do you have completed? I mean, the right thing now? is, we still, we, you know, we still, our first goal was until the end of March to complete the first two episodes. Sadly, because of different intern challenges where some very important network and things, what we needed crashed, we, we had to wait. And um, so we are in the process still of the first episode. We had quite the last few weeks of breakthrough because the whole uh, um, technical things, and I don't want to get too technical, what we need have been set up again. Looking back, we saw God's plan in it because we are now prepared for much more. We could do it very fast. The challenge is really on the end um, to get the message out and to find people, sponsors in the whole thing because we were not really putting it a lot out there. I made it only more public in my normal network and circles and where people gave here and there. So we have in the moment seven people working yeah. on it. And if you think about Disney, they have sometimes hundreds of animation guys working on it. It's sometimes for years to produce something. And um, so we have seven people, which costs us around $20,000 a month. We would like to have five more, which we would need $36,000 a month, which is in the animation industry, not much. It sounds maybe to some people a lot, but it's not much. And if we get these five people more, we, we have in two, three months, the first two episodes finished. And so you're doing podcasts like this and other outsourcing to get the word out there, to get the story out there. Yeah. In the moment, we approach people directly, which we know either through our network and um, also the people I work with in Seattle, they're very well connected to Hollywood and to different people. So we're preparing in the moment um, a promotion pack where we also can contact directly some investors. So far, the people who supported this were people who know me through my ministries. I'm 30 years in ministry now, so where people know me and got touched their hearts and they say we want to give this we want to give that so we did not make a big public relation promotion um we don't feel like it's the time We've, we we still work on create promotion package which should be finished in a few weeks and then we will look in the states also for sponsors or investors and we will also approach the big ones netflix and all these different channels which you have but we will not compromise in our vision and in our message i think that's the biggest part yeah I don't know anything about this stuff, but just thinking if people like Netflix and other people, they would maybe want you to change the, the vision of the, the message or other things like that. Maybe I'm wrong, but just thinking from outside of this whole project, you know, people from the world don't necessarily want to hear that encouraging story like that. There's definitely some challenges there. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I've thought a lot about it because when I received it in India, I mean, it was pure 
direct gospel, there's the dark, there's the light. And then over the years, I went in this direction, like many people say, you know, you know, seeker friendly and whatever. But then I thought, no, the message of Christ is a wonderful message. We need to communicate it in a way and then let God do the rest. So the episodes, we don't step out like this is, um, it, it's not like Veggie Tales, you know, where it's very clear. We have quotes in it. Um, in the script, you know, specifically like the ruler of the kingdom, Euphoria, is Avinu, which is the Hebrew word for our father, which it's in the Old Testament. So I use a lot of symbolic. I use a lot of uh, statements from Jesus and the things because I believe in the word of God will do the rest. And of course, if we are asked, we stand our ground, what we believe and why we do this. Um, but it will be not the typical where you have constantly scripture quoted, but we will have, and it looks in a moment like on the end of every episode, something like that we remind the people that this story, this principle is based on the teachings and the lives of Jesus. Because I don't want the New Age to, to, to steal the story. Um, I want to make clear this is inspired by God, but we, 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 we have an approach because we believe, and as Christians, we believe that the principles of Jesus and his life and the teachings and the word of God are really long-term helpful and will navigate us through struggles of life. And children are the most open to learn in the first four or five years. We know from psychology, that's the years where you influence children the most. And then we will have also this story for different age levels. You know, there's a lot of ideas in the strategy which we have which will add it to it you know in the area of the app of an app in the area of a fashion uh line and stuff like this yeah and i believe if you continue to honor god with it and respect the vision that he's given you you know and stay in line with that i think if he really wants you to do it he'll continue to provide the resources continue to provide the people on board and the the project you know i think it'll be completed if you continue to honor it like yeah. you say you are and don't change and what the we message. need to understand yeah. is this is actually a great time for us as Christians, you know. First of all, I want to say, you know, we all have these economic challenges and stuff like this. And people look, where shall I put something? And, and you know, without going economics, uh, it's a time where we have to ask God. But I, I think also it's a time where God will really put Christian projects, which really... Can, and we have seen it in the last year, specifically in America, um, how many good movies came out there. You know, on the other side, we are living in the internet time where the web is there. And with every TV channel I spoke in Europe, they all see the future in the web. And so long as the web is not controlled, like in other countries like China, we can... So if any one of the big channels says we don't want it, we can produce it ourselves and put it in the web. Because they're all looking to get into the web with web series, um, episodes, different episodes, because they say the kids are more on their iPhones and their iPads than they are before the television. So the future, and it's, it's, it is already now, but the future will be more and more, you know, in the web. And Christians can produce their own web series and put it up there. But it needs that we see that we see the possibility together and that we unite and everybody gives his part to it however he can support it with the gifts God have given us in, in, in our personality but also in, in resources. I also want to talk about this book that you've written, yeah. Father, Where Are You? So you've written this book. It's kind of like a testimony book about your yeah, life. Is that true? Yeah. The first time I wrote it, um, it's almost 15 years ago in Germany and it became in the Christian area a bestseller. And then I, I felt like, yeah, it's, it's because I have more and more connections to people in, in the States. And so I thought I want to do it in English that more people can read this book because I got a lot of testimonies about young people came to Christ through this. So can you just tell us a little bit about that? Just tell the listeners just a little snippet about that book. Yeah, the, the book is called Father, Where Are You? You can get it through Amazon and read the reviews there. But the thing is this, um, after working with a lot of young people over the years, I discovered one thing in my life and in their life. What we're all looking for is a father. Not a father my, like we might have experienced here on earth. So the story of my life is the story of someone who searches for a father, like many of us. So everything what the father gives, the identity, you know, you have a name, the identity, this whole feeling of belonging, the security, and the inheritance, you know, something for the future. And so I speak in this book about this heart of an orphan, which brought me in the place to search for something else, what looks like this, what the father gives, which were 
uh, which was the gang, Red Devils. So it gave me a name, it gave me kind of identity, it gave me kind of security. And, you know, I felt protected for the future in it. And so many of us, many young people, when I was speaking in youth jails and I spoke with young people, you can trace it back, all have a missing father or a missing parent or a father who is there and is still not there. So the, that's why I called it Father, Where Are You? Because I believe in each human is this cry, Father, Where Are You? Which is a cry for our God, the Father. So and this is the main point of the story. And the other part is how on my search, looking for life or what I call the love of the Father, I also went into, your, into the occult and I became a spirit medium. And how I was deceived from the spiritual world, first believing this is not really there, it's something that happens in subconscious in our mind, but then finding out evil and the demonic and the negative powers like the Bible speaks about is real. So I speak also, I, I write about this and in love warn the people not to open spiritual doors because it will have influence on their life. And then it finished with the, with, with, with an encouragement to pray and to open your life to Jesus. How may this book be different than other books out there that, or in the Christian world? Yeah, I think the things what I always hear from people is the honesty, which it is recent. I mean, I'm not, I have not put makeup on to make it look nice. I, re, I write about my mistakes, my failures, my struggles, my defeats, and how God always came with his grace. And, and specifically, I think um, we don't have really much, many books about this whole subject of when Jesus said, you know, if we see him, we see the Father. And I discovered in my traveling and speaking with people that often from, my, from our mind, yes, we know God is a Father, but we have not really connected with a, a, a truth in our hearts. So this book makes you hunger to know the Father more on an on a intimate experiencing level. You know, but something what has not in the first place to do with emotions has to do with knowing him. I think that's that's the main difference in all of this. And this is the feedback I always get from people when they say, when I was reading this, you know, I was crying. When I was reading this, thank you so much. You have been so honest. It brought hope to me. Thank you so much. It showed me really got the father in a different way. That's the feedback we have. I was looking at the book on uh, your website here. And the first thing that I read when I clicked on it was a new book by Stefan. I don't want this bastard. I was only a boy when I first heard these terrible words. And I'm like, whoa, this is going to be a heavy book. You know, and I looked at it a little bit more. This unforgettable tale of one man's journey from being an orphan to being a son. Yeah. So I just wanted to touch on that too before we ended the podcast because I want people to check it out. And I'll put your website down in the link here and your Blue Knight's website as well. Is there anything else, any other way that the people can reach out to you? I mean, the thing is, if you put the Blue Knight's website up there, if people write the email through the website, it will come to me and they will get all the information about the movie, how they can help us, how we want to move forward, who is involved, and then they can send us emails about more questions. The book, Father, Where Are You? I would recommend for the people in America if they wanted to get it through Amazon. You can get it from there. It's faster because if you get it directly from my website, I usually send them from the UK, but you get them through Amazon there. And um, and it would be great if you have read the book, if you leave a, a feedback um, uh, on Amazon. Yeah, and it's it's really a good book also to give to young people so that they're understand God in a different way, not in the religious way, uh, but in a loving way and in an honest way. Well, thanks again for being a part of the podcast. Is there anything else you would like to communicate to our listeners today? Maybe finally, I would like to say, I know that the situation in, in America, there are many more Christians than we have here in Europe. In Europe, it's getting more and more difficult for Christians. I love it that I'm um, still in America. There, there are many, many, many Christians. And I know God takes care, but God also uses his church and his people. And it would be great if the people who listen to this in the States would think about it. If maybe God wants to use them to help to produce here something, what can really change the life of the children. If you think about in the future, when a child takes a balloon and has a balloon in his hand, and even if it flies away, where in the past, you know, oh, my balloon flew away, you know, this child looks to the balloon, there's this red balloon, and the bal and this child remembers Lizzie from this episode. Lizzie, this adventurous balloon girl, and this child remembers 
the quotes, the songs this child learned, it can change the perspective of children and release something in this dark time in their heart, which will give them a foundation for their whole life and the open door for this loving God. Yeah. And thank you so much for doing this podcast with me. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks again for being a part of the podcast. And to end the podcast, would you be able to pray us out? Oh, of course. Of course. So Father in heaven, you are truly the best father. So often, and we will never understand you completely, but your ways are good. And I pray for all these listeners out there of this podcast and for the people who did the podcast. I pray that you help us to hear not only your voice in these days, read not only your word in these days, but give us the grace to apply it. Father, I pray that we see the chance and the possibilities we have to be light in this time, to be hope in this time. And Father, help us to all, help us all to find our place in this wonderful, great plan you have for us. I bless all the listeners and I, I bless this whole team who did this podcast, Father. And I thank you so much that we are one family and that your kingdom is real and that you are the best father of the whole world. Amen. Amen. You've just listened to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast with your host, Pastor Chris Busher. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast was recorded live in studio with final editing made before uploading. Subscribe today to Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast on iTunes or Google Play. For more fantastic daily content, visit Pastor Chris Busher online via Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't miss the next episode on Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast.